Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy here. I'm a self-taught software developer and in today's video, we're going to answer the question, should you go the self-taught route and do it on your own in becoming a software developer? So uh, if you guys haven't heard my story before, definitely check it out. I'll put a link right here uh, where I talk about how I basically went from a software or I say a car salesman to a software developer in about one year's time. And so a lot of people ask the question like, should I take a boot camp? Should I go back to school? Should I get a four year degree in something like computer science? Or should I just go the completely self taught route? And I am not, the, if you watch any of my videos, you know, I'm not the type of person to just say, yeah, do this. This is the best way to do things. I'm more of a practical person. I always try to come at it with context, right? There's nuance in everything. There's nuance in everything. So let's just step back and talk a little bit about why I went the self taught route. I didn't just decide to go to boot camp or I didn't put all of my eggs in the school basket because I did eventually go back to school, but that was after I got my first job. I, I graduated two years after I got my first job just to get that degree. So when I first learned that I could become a software developer, um, talking to my friend who, who recommended it to me, read a little bit ahead first JavaScript and I, something clicked in my brain. I said, Oh shit, this is, this is the real deal. This is, I got to take this serious and I got to go all in. At that, at that point in time, I didn't want to accrue, um, I, you know, I didn't want to pay out of pocket at least for a boot camp. And to be honest with you, I don't even remember hearing about a boot camp, so I never probably thought about that as an option. And I don't really think I would have done it, to be totally honest. Um, and then school, my, my friend had recommended, he said, if you're even thinking about school, he said, do it later on. He said, like, go the self-taught route as far as you can and then just enroll uh, when you want to start applying for jobs. And if once you get the job, just just get out of school. And that's so that was something that was floating around in my head as well. But more than anything else, all I could think about was if I could do this on my own, I'd rather do it that way. You know, like this isn't my first go around in terms of trying to learn something that I didn't know. So I got into car sales and I had never done car sales before. I'd never done any sort of sales before. And believe me, there was that, that process of, of doing something that was really uncomfortable, which was selling and really just working in the car sales environment is like high pressure. It's like a frat house. That's not really my personality. Um, you know, just pressure to sell, like, like there's so much pressure and it's a, it, in a lot of ways, it's kind of, there can be some really toxic aspects of, of selling cars, but, I always viewed that as a learning experience and I went from being um, uh, a pretty shitty car salesman to a okay car salesman. So so I, I increased my skills. That towards the end when I left, I felt all that you know I was making a lot more progress, but I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. So there was that. There was the car sales experience of improving my skills. Then there was I've lost weight. I've lost a lot of weight before. So I've I've lost I think 50 pounds at one point. I went from 240 pounds to like 190. I gotten kind of kind of chunky. <laughs> so um, that was a really big learning experience because I realized I had to take control of my, I had to get my shit together basically and really focus on uh, dedicated time on, on, on improving myself. So there was these, these past experiences that I had had where I knew if I put my mind, if I put all my attention, all of my focus onto something that I could do it. Now, here's what I learned in the, those, those experiences the, and that really set the difference from and gave me the confidence to go out and do the self-taught thing. I really understood at that point from from both car sales and the losing weight, and if, and there was a few other things. But what I really really got ingrained in my head was that the time frame aspect of things. So when you are thinking of losing weight, so say you need to lose about thirty pounds. Most people I ever hear talk about this go, they set some crazy fucking unrealistic time aspect. They go like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds in two months or two weeks or something ridiculous, right? And you are basically, like, you don't know the laws of, of I don't want to say the laws of nature, like, because I mean, you could absolutely, that's, that's a, you could accomplish that goal, but you don't know yourself. Like, you don't know how shit goes. Like, you haven't been following your patterns of behavior and seeing how it goes. Whereas for me, because of those experiences of, of trying to improve and really hammering home at the, at the fundamentals, whether it was sales or, or weight loss, because you have to hammer home at the fundamentals. You have to learn the fundamentals deeply if you're really going to get success at something that you're not good at. With all that self-reflection, you really realize that your behavior is your human being and you are going to have good days and bad days. And you, you know that 
the timeline is going to be a lot longer than you typically think. You should give yourself bigger timelines than you probably expect. And more than anything else, you have to be in the journey or be committed to the journey for as long as it's going to take. So for a lot of people, let's just take weight loss as a good example. A lot of people who get into it, they, they, they realize they have an issue. They realize they look down um, at their, their belly or they uh, having trouble keeping up with their kids. And they, there's a moment where like, man, I got to take care of this. Otherwise I may not be around for the, my first kid's wedding. So what they do is they, they realize they have a problem. They commit to changing it, but then they, they don't, they don't have enough reference experience to know that this could take a really long time and it's going to take, it's going to be, you're going to have to alter so many different aspects of who you are from your work ethic to your discipline to just the amount of time. Your leisure time will probably like, you know, you'll, you'll have a go from having a decent amount of leisure time or maybe even very little leisure time to almost no leisure time. And so these are all really stressful and um, change is very stressful. And well, let me wrap this back to the self-taught thing. If you get in, if you think that you're going to be a self-taught developer and you heard about somebody getting a job in three months and you're like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to hammer really hard for, for three months and I'm going to become a software developer. You are, you, you don't, you're not grasping how difficult this process is because software development is not this crazy skill. It's really not. It's really not. For most people, it's actually something that once you, you know it, you, you pretty much get it. It's not this, it's not rocket science, let's say. But to get there, right, to get to that point where you can understand and feel comfortable uh, with most programming languages and with software in general or, you know, web development, it takes immersion for a very long period of time. And it takes a lot of just, just showing up and, and working with, like working with the code and building applications and talking to really smart people and asking really smart people questions and befriending developers and, and constantly thinking about all this cool stuff and constantly, constantly thinking about how to make better applications. So you're thinking three months and great. Like if you can get a job in three months, I am going to be the biggest proponent, the biggest supporter. I love people getting the software development field. Believe me on this, but it's almost like a, it's almost like a disrespect, not to the, to the field, it's not it's some sort of disrespect to me. It's a disrespect to the fundamentals of, of learning anything. And if you are really serious about becoming a software developer and you want to go down the self-taught route, the one thing that you have to be committed to is the long haul. Now, how long is the long haul? I really don't know. I can't tell you that. It all depends on how much commitment you have. But for me, I think a year is a really, really solid really solid goal. Like you can, you can go from nothing to something or nothing, nothing to a, a software developer in a year. Now that's just general. Like, I don't know what you're going for. Are you going for machine learning? Are you going for web development? Are you going for, um, you know, uh, just complete backend desktop applications, mobile. I don't know where you live. These are all things that would adjust that, that prediction. But Long story short, you need to be in the long term. If you can get it for three months, awesome. But you also have to expect that it could take a year and a half or maybe even two years. And you, but you have to be committed to the journey. If you think that you want to do software development and it's just kind of a, that'd be nice. Or I, you know, I, I saw, or I, I read a little bit of a, a JavaScript book and I thought it was really cool, but, um, you know, I'm not really into the two year thing or one year thing. That's probably a good sign that it's just not meant for you. Or you just at this moment are not totally committed. Because look, if you're going to go the self-taught route and you're not gonna, you're gonna forego, forego school, you're gonna forego boot camp. like the, the amount of energy that you have to expend on things like meeting people because you, you need to get better, right? So you're gonna have to find some mentors, like absolutely you have to find some mentors, whether you, it's somebody that you met online um, or something that you can meet at a meetup, like gotta do that. So you gotta spend time meeting people, talking with people. You gotta spend time, uh, you know how much time you spend just like kind of scared <laughs> as a, like, I don't, I don't, I don't mean like, like in, in a state of fear, but like I'm learning JavaScript. Should I be learning something else? Okay. No, no, no. Get the distraction away. Okay. I'm just going to keep learning JavaScript. Okay. Is this really the right thing to do? No, no, no. got to keep focusing. Like there's no, at least with school, they can give you structure and they can tell you like, no, no, just learn this and you can feel a lot more comfortable. So just kind of being like, un, I don't know if scared is the word then unsure of yourself most of the time. Right. Um, you have to live without validation. Again, if you go to a boot camp, they get, I think they give you a certificate, or at least it's something you put on your resume. Like it's a concrete thing you can put on your resume. Or if you go to school, they give you a degree. That's a concrete thing that you can put on your resume. Whereas for you, you're, you've got, 
your portfolio applications. So you get no validation. Like there's no one giving you validation saying like, yeah, you're good to go. It's just you being like, okay, I think I'm confident and I hopefully, you'll hopefully have some mentors so they can tell you that you, your skills are up to par. So there are so many freaking challenges that come with being a, a self-taught software developer. Now there's a, amazing benefits that I'll, I, that are well worth it. But again, like, do you really want to like, is it really worth it to you to go the self-taught route? Like maybe you should go to school. I can tell you this, if you do go the self-taught route, one of the, I'd say one of the most beneficial aspects of going that way is that you get really good at being resourceful. Like if you are the type of person who's just going to figure shit out, that's so valuable in life. Like think about this, like I have the confidence now at this point in my life to do damn near anything. Like with this YouTube channel, like I didn't sit around all day and read books about how to make YouTube videos and how to, you know, the best lighting angles. Like I just threw shit together. I still don't really, I'm really not that good at producing videos. I don't, my content's not that great. I, I don't spend tons of time on my content. I practice it for sure. And I want to make really good content, but I didn't wait until, until all of the stars aligned until I felt like I was finally, you know, my, my speaking skills were like this high. And do you know where a lot of that came from? It came from software development. It came from having to just like, I was given an assignment at work early on in my, in my first job. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And so I was like, I'm just going to Google the shit out of this. I'm going to, you know, find some Pluralsight videos on it. I'm going to uh, read blog posts about it until I figure it out. And then if I don't know what I'm doing, I'll ask a really pointy question to somebody who's really smart on my dev team. And that was like the old, like the ultimate gift that the self-taught route gave me was that I felt super confident in doing anything. Like I don't need people's permission. I don't need somebody's validation to tell me I'm ready. I'm usually going to go do it. I'm still scared. Like, believe me, when I do YouTube videos, like I'm still scared. Like, are people going to like it? Is it good enough? Is this high quality enough? But I sort of just have let go a lot of needing that external validation, uh, a stamp of approval or waiting to give out my best stuff uh, for, for, for putting on a video. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, I've kind of jumped around here, but I have no script on this one. I just want to cover a few things that I've noticed from people who've become soft, self-taught software developers and from my own journey as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you guys, I have a mentoring program if you're interested in working with me for people who are trying to become software developers. I'm only interested in highly, highly committed people. I totally get it if you're, if you are not at that level yet, but if you are really committed, you know that you're, you're dedicated to this journey, sort of like what I was talking about in this video, uh, go ahead and book a call with me. It's a, it's a free call. It's a career strategy session. Um, you can get to that link by going to andysterkwitz.com forward slash call and book a call with me. Other than that, Thank you so much, guys. Go ahead and subscribe to the video by hitting the subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to get icon, uh, notifications whenever I put a new video out. Other than that, that's all I got. Peace out, guys.